Hi. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Pete. No, no, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's get with it. Come on. Do you still want to be lawyers? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. I didn't hear you. Do you want to be lawyers? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I really think that's all you have to learn. I was trying to, on the way up, is, is when you give time, I guess, to think. Um, you know, I mean, it's certainly there are academics in this profession. I think if, if I were to uh, uh, compare myself to Jim and say, well, <clears throat> he, Jim is, uh, my impression is that Jim is a much more academic person than I am. I'm, that's not to say I'm non-academic, but I'm thinking, and, and we've never tried to case together, but to get that part of being a lawyer is, so I, you know, again, I, you, know, you have to learn the content of whatever it is you're handling, right? So those many moons ago when I tried an arson case, do you get, you actually have to learn about arson. You with me? Yeah. You know, that, 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 I mean, there's no way around it. You gotta learn whatever, you know. And so there is that component to this that you really, it's hard to be shallow. I've tried. It's really hard to be shallow and do this well. And, and I see a difference between Jim and myself. I think when Jim would pick up the same arson material or DNA, you have to learn about DNA to, to try a case that involves DNA, and I've done that. Um, but you've had an opportunity to, to see Jim, and you've had an opportunity to see me. And I guess what I'm getting at is if, if Jim and I were, had to each learn the same scientific technical, dense, difficult material, I think he'd do it much faster than I would. Like it would take me much longer to get, if I even got to the depth of his understanding, it would take me much longer. Um, what am I? A lawyer. A lawyer. And what I'm saying to you guys is that uh, you can learn how to learn. You can learn, I think you can, I mean I have. I, I think I mean, I'm not academic, but I think I've learned to be academic enough to do what I do for a living, for sure. Um, and so you can learn this. Uh, you know, you don't have to be as bright as any other individual. You don't have to compare yourself to any other individual. You're, you're, it's not something you compare yourself to. Can you do this? And if you can do this, yeah, you do have to have that capacity, right? You can't go forward without understanding the subject subject matter. Um, but that can come in time. There is no subject matter on the LSAT. So you know what I'm saying? They're not requiring you to do that now, right? They're not requiring you to learn anything. There's not, there's not going to be anything on this test about arson or DNA or anything technical, right? It's not, that's not, that will come with law school, right? So what I want you guys concentrating on is, again, it's not important that, that Jim can do well on this test, and it's not important that I can do well on this test. What's important in this room? That we do. Yeah, that you guys do well. You with me? Mm -hmm. So we've been doing this forever, meaning we've been lawyers for, you know, since I've had hair. Uh, it's been a long time. So we can sometimes take things for granted because we've been doing this so long, right? So what I really do need you to do, and it's, it's not, you know, it can be challenging to be up here for five hours. Um, so it is important, right, that where something's not clear to you, you express that. Um, and you can be shy and you can be introverted. And it's gonna be easier as a lawyer to be able to express yourself in a room full of people. You with me? I, mean, I suppose you can survive without doing that. Right, but you want to change to some degree who you are, right? You want to change the personality characteristics so that they're more in line with the characteristics that come in handy if you're going to be a lawyer. Um, you know, it's, you, and this isn't just law; this is life. Um, think about every decision. You know, I was reading earlier this morning for a last. The demise of newspapers, right? The, the demise of, of, of newspaper as an industry. And I remember as a kid, right, when I was in uh, high school, I would I, I would go to the local uh, soda shop, and on Sundays I would put in the advertising section for the New York Times. 
So we, you know, the bunch of New York Times would arrive, and I would put the inserts in there every Sunday. And uh, the Village Voice, which used to be in business as a paper, the Village Voice got most of, got an awful lot of its revenue from the fact that on every, I think it was Wednesday, every Wednesday the new real estate listings went up there. So people didn't necessarily buy the Village Voice for the articles. Some, uh, sure, at least some people did, right? But you get that in New York City, I think it was Wednesday, if you were looking for an apartment, well, in 19, you know, 83, there was no internet, right? So the newspaper, a lot of the newspaper business was built on making revenue from sales, from, so if you wanted a, if you wanted a used car, right? That's what went in that Times, right? The supplement that went in there were, if you wanted to shop for a used car, you would go to the Avenue, you would go to that section of the Times. If you were looking for real estate, I mean, a, a lot of business having nothing to do with the quality of the paper funded that paper. And it was a profitable industry. But do you get, what didn't those folks know in 1983? What was gonna come around where you didn't need a newspaper to find a real estate listing. Craigslist. <laughs> well, well, yeah. But, but uh, how about the internet? Talk to me again. Yeah? Yeah. And all I'm saying is this is not just law. It is law, right? But this process, is if you look at any, you know, the folks who were in the business of uh, uh, making shoes for horses at the turn of the 20th century, right? What did they not see coming? Cars. 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 And so our reasoning is always incomplete, so don't try to be perfect. You know, and try not to be, if you can, uh, sanctimonious. Could you be less sanctimonious with me the work to me? Right? Only be sanctimonious about your humility and how humble you are. Then that, then you can be sanctimonious, right? But this is our process. And so, you know, this area here is huge because you don't know what you don't know. And if the fates are not on your side, it's going to come back. You really think when, when, uh, when I started this, do you really think I knew that the LSAC was going to put the Khan Academy up on the website for free? Talk to me. So would it be fair to say, I found out somewhat later something I might have been helpful to have known in advance. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying life, you know, our reasoning is always incomplete. And why? You know, so just embrace that it's incomplete and that you can, uh, you can prove things to certain standards. And all prove means is you meet that standard. Prove doesn't mean you're right. Prove just means if I say to you I can show something that's probably true, right? Well, then I meet that once you said to me, yeah, that's right, it's probably true, right? Which is different from I'm going to show you something beyond a reasonable doubt, right? So just let this happen and, and let it happen in your uh, daily life where you're proceeding this way, right? You know, but again, facts established are, thing, are matters not in dispute. With me, there isn't a lot that's not in this. On this test, there's a lot in, not in dispute, but in real life, there's not a lot that's not in dispute. But if you get all parties to agree, so when you're trying to persuade someone, you want to say to that person, "Do you agree that this premise is factual?" You with me? And if the person doesn't agree that the premise is factual, you want to say, uh, "We want to. Uh, if you want to." Uh, have policies to uh, combat global warming. Haven't you stated as a premise that global warming exists? Yes. Mm -hmm. But isn't that a premise that could be challenged by someone who doesn't agree with you? Mm -hmm. And doesn't that now become there's a fact in opposition? Mm -hmm. And that has to be resolved. So I'm not certain, a million years, I'm not saying you're wrong or not. But you get this is a much more disciplined world where you need to entertain before you dismiss the other side, right? Again, established facts are not the same as inferred facts. And every single time you infer, you could be what? Wrong. Wrong. And it's really, so, 
just write humility somewhere and keep looking at the bloody word. You can get really good at this. Jim's really good at this. Jim makes errors. I'm pretty good at it. I make errors, right? And, you're, and, and what you're trying to do is get help from the other side so that you don't make those errors. That's the humility thing, right? So here, it, it's, it's not an established fact. It's not even a fact that's explicitly stated. It's something that you infer is true from other information established to be true. Yes? So, think about, again, regular life. When your cell phone rings, do you infer, now that doesn't mean it happens all the time, but do you infer a likelihood that when your cell phone rings, you'll hear a voice on the other end? Mm -hmm. yes. Talk to me. Yes. 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 Now, you don't infer that happens every single time. Is that fair? Yes. But as a regular matter, phone rings, what might you say before you even hear a voice? Hello. 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 But stop, slow down, think about how you think, because that's what this test is testing, right? So do you see what you've just done? By saying hello before you've heard a voice, you've inferred there'll be a voice on that phone. And you could be wrong. Yeah, talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just wrap yourself around this H word. But even as you build your argument on explicit facts and, 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 and implicit facts that you're inferring, even as you do that, you're conscious that you're human. You know, you just don't know everything. You may, again, I've met a lot of people who they know everything. They're brighter than I am. Uh, I, I know nothing. I know how to reason. Well, I don't really know how to reason. I understand that reason. Um, so you get, you're always saying, once I'm in this world, I want to try to, maybe, maybe an argument, maybe you could present an argument to someone else and say, do you see anything I don't see? Maybe you can present an argument and say, well, what am I missing? Could you do that? Mm -hmm. But isn't that humble? I mean, this whole body, the whole body process is humility. Which I guess you don't think of as lawyers as being humble, right? And, and they're not in their personalities. But if they're doing this correctly, they are. So you want to be aware of this. Before you say to me something must be true, well, if something must be true, then you're telling me there's nothing yet undiscovered. That's a hell of a statement. So you are, you, you, yeah, yeah, you could tell me that two times two is four and say that must be true. Once, yeah, I stipulate to whatever the rules of math are. Okay. There ain't a lot of that around once you leave the sciences. And then again here, someone's going to disagree with you. They're being paid to disagree with you. Are you with me? So just on a very practical level, if you're, if you're confronting someone, maybe it's on the whether or not there's executive authority to build the wall right, along the southern border. And you have very strong views about the about the wall and whether it should be built or not. But now you come into my profession, right? When you litigate, don't you really need to understand the reasoning of the other side? Yes. But doesn't that require you to accept to receive the reasoning of the other side? Yes. And isn't that difficult to do when you're indignant? Mm -hmm. So this business is you, it, you're not going to be effective if you just shut down on ideological grounds. You'll be effective as an ideologue if you do that. Yeah, that's, that's what, you know, you know I'm, who am I? But you're going to have a tough time with lawyers who can be ideologues when they're not big lawyers. You know, but it's tough being both at the same time because you lose your ability to see this. And yet there's some reasoning being at the other table who's saying something you don't want to hear get over it, right? And you, if, if you don't agree with that, rip it apart. But rip it apart here and here and here, not simply by being indignant. So, so this is what I'm going to do today. We'll, we'll um, I'll, I'll touch on some logical 
Uh, but I know Jim did, Jim, I'm sure Jim concentrated on that last week. So we will spend more time on analytical. And we'll see if we get to reading count, we'll see. Um, <coughs> do you have any questions left over from last week with Jim? Anything at all? In other words, what you can do each week is uh, and I'll, I'll communicate with Jim. With respect to volume six, limit yourself to exam 72 through 77. Please don't go crazy. If you've looked at exam 78, that's fine. But, but the volume has exam 72 through 81. So what I want to do uh, structurally is in here, I want to rip apart exam 72 through 77. And rip apart means I want you to understand it. I don't want you to speed read it. Uh, I, I don't want to cover 80 exams, which we could, because it's not about how much you do. It's about how you do it, right? And then you're going to do it this way for the rest of your life. And it doesn't matter what you're looking at. Um, so, here it's okay, it's in exam 72 through 77 when we're in logical reasoning, right? What Jim and I are gonna want, wanna, want you to develop is how do you solve the flaw issue, which I infer Jim spent some time with, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? But just think about it and make sure it makes sense to you. You with me? Because I could be saying something that makes no sense to you. It makes perfect sense to me, right? It would make no sense. That's not what this is about. You've got to get into law school. This is not about me going home at the end of the day and saying to Vicki, they loved me, I had a great day. Bullshit. By all means, love me. You know, but that's not what this is about. This is true. This is about um, an email I, had, I, I got, I think, on Thursday from somebody who went through the program at the Toro Law and who, out of the blue, now he's in Toro Law School, and he sends a a note that says, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm an officer in uh, the Latin American uh, Student Association in the law schools, and I really want people to hear what you say, so please come and attend this conference and speak at this conference that we're holding in, in New York City. That's what it's about. That's not even about, oh, maybe I'll get business. You get, this is about your success, right? Honest to God, it's about your success. That raises my self-esteem. But he didn't get, again, because he, again, I don't know what his score change was, but he wasn't going to go to law school before he came into the program. Right? Um, so I need you to work. Don't let me down. All right? Don't let me down. Are you with me? Because remember, it's all about me. All right? So I need you to work. I need you to prepare. I need you to put in time. And I need you to accept, you know, if God has other plans, we're not going to change it, but we're not going to have regret. But this is about you. So the plan's going to be exam 72 through 77, issue by issue in logical reasoning. Laws, assumptions, strengthening, weakening, conclusions, principles, and then there's a bunch. But those are the big six. So the big six are flaws, assumptions, strengthen, weaken, conclusions and principles. There are about eight others that are not as heavily tested. Um, but on any given argument, the writer could attach any issue to it. In other words, when I create an argument, the argument, the argument could then, I could then say, we'll find a flaw in there. I could then say, find an assumption in there. I could then say, strengthen it, weaken it, identify a principle, draw a con I can do whatever I want. So it's not like this thing is, it's not like when you're working on flaws, that's biology. And when you're working on assumptions, that's physics. And when you're working on strengthening, you know, that's something, no, no. This is all, the, it's, it's right here. That's all we care about. That's all any lawyer would care about. So what I'll do today is I'll, in the logical, I'll pick up the issues that Jim didn't cover, uh, last week, right? But you get the big picture. The big picture in logical to take these first five exams 
and become fluent in how you are going to approach them because those folks taking the test right now are seeing exactly what we're seeing here. The exam never changes. When we go to analytical, I'll be doing this, but in but but <clears throat> apply to analytical, and then we will do that today. And again, what I urge you to do in analytical is just wipe the board clean. Just wipe it clean. Just wipe it clean. Okay, you, you know you have the virus. If, if if you've picked up anything called logic games, you're infected. <laughs> well, again, because that's marketing for some purpose, but the mar purpose certainly can't be to demonstrate you to how to think like a lawyer. I, I, whatever its purpose, right? It cannot be, I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to think the way I've been taught to think by purposely misnaming a material term. I can't be. So maybe there's some purpose out there that I'm missing, but since the test is measuring, do you think like a lawyer, does that make sense? Let's start thinking like lawyers. But I mean every day in your life, right? You don't just leave it here. Right, and you'll start to drive people crazy, and it's terrific. They start calling you asshole, and you want to <laughs> No, 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 it's really a spell. Just, you know, as long as it doesn't turn physical. Unless you can beat them up, then it's okay. Which I can't. Okay. Um, so, any questions? Okay. Did you say big C, so big A. I'm sorry? Did you say big six or big eight? <coughs> they just um, listed down flaws, assumptions. Were they eight or six? I'm sorry. It was what eight so, or six? Uh, Question types, flaws, assumptions, strength and weaken. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. It's, uh, it's the big six. Okay. All right. There are additional issues, and they are terribly important. But if, you, if all you did, and again, I'm saying I'm where you are. I want to know what the return of my investment is. Like the, the amount of time, it's just like the bar exam. You get, you're gonna have to make choices preparing for the bar exam. It's the same thing, nobody gets this. It's the same thing whether you're trying a case, but it, it, it's all the same, it's your big choices, right? So on your tasks, if you add up in logical reasoning, and it spills over into reading comp, but if you add up in logical reasoning, strengthen and weaken it at least 10 questions, right? And let me, let me strike the at least, because any test they could go up or down a little. But, but certainly that would not be a, an aggressive estimate. So on strength, there's two of them, right? That's 10 questions. Assumptions. I've never seen a test with fewer than six, and I've rarely seen a test with as few as six. But even if we said that, okay. So assumptions now takes that number up to 16. Flaws. Eight. And, you know, again, you, I, if, if, they, if they ever put six flaws on the test, well, then they put ten assumptions on the test, right? You know, so I said, well, the way. So if I have ten weakening and strengthening, and if I have six, and I mean, that's really conservative. Uh, assumptions. And now I have eight flaws, so that's 24, right? Now I throw in conclusions. Now we have to discuss, maybe we'll do that. Because conclusions are the issue where oftentimes they never use the word conclusion. And conclusions get conflated with inferences. Have, have you noticed this has a lot to do with language? Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it, it's gonna drive people crazy. Uh, it was during the, uh, during the wedding I had a uh, discussion, well it wasn't really a discussion, but I had a, uh, a uh, back and forth with uh, someone who at some point during the back and forth said something to the effect but you're using words <laughs> <laughs> son of a bitch <laughs> you caught me <laughs> you know, but for someone who's not a lawyer it, it, you know, it, it sounds reckless right, why don't you answer the, why don't you just give me a straight answer right and I'm saying well I can't answer what you asked me because I don't fully understand what you said, <laughs> right? It's not that you understand what you say, you may or may not, but if you're asking me the question, don't I have to understand what you said, what you asked? Mm. And if you speak with less precision, which again in a million years is not again, <laughs> just, 
you, you know, I, it's just, I've been doing it all my life. But if you speak with less precision than the precision with which I hear, do you get ambiguity arises? So, it's hugs. But, uh, so, so I think maybe that's actually a good segue to doing conclusion issues. But there'll be at least 10 conclusion issues. So that would push it up to, I believe, 34. And then we have principles. And there's no exam on the planet that hasn't had five principle issues on it. So you get, we're up to 39 on what I'm referring to are the big six. <coughs> and that's a very down-to-earth conservative uh, estimate. Um, but the conclusions will allow us to sus discuss what, what I think the difference is between a conclusion and an inference, which you can bring up with Jim next week. Uh, because a, a conclusion almost always is an inference, but it's not just an inference. It's your last inference. Just that's your conclusion. So. Mm -hmm. um, so I was practicing assumptions and flaws this week, just like going through on Khan Academy as a matter of fact. Because um, you can like section them out and just like do like six at a time and then you can keep requesting more questions specific to that type. Yeah. So uh, the assumptions, I noticed they were easier when you found that gap in logic between, of course, the statement and the conclusion. And I attempted to do that for a flaw. It definitely didn't work as often, of course. And do you have specific examples where you struggle? Um, yeah, so initially looking at it, depending on if they were considering it kind of like, like what was the intention behind the way that they did it in flaw, so it doesn't quite doesn't follow the same logic to do it the same way. Okay. So what I want you to do, and this applies to everybody, um, I, want, I want you to learn how to learn in what may be a different way. Right. So when, when, you're, when you're putting the time in, and that is, again, you could just be freak right, and you don't have to do a damn thing and you go to law school. Right. But, but I'm telling you, if that's the case, then you're going to be in law school with a much higher percentage of freak bright people because you're in law school. And then when you pass the bar, they're almost all freak bright. I mean, not me. But, but you know, then you kind of say, oh shit, they're all smart now. What do I do? Now I have to work. You know? So better to work now, right, uh, to prevail later. But so to take advantage of that, of that effort, Next week, right, I want you to have a list. And the list will be here. Here's the page number, the question number, and here's the flaw issue, even with the bloody answer. I'm looking at the bloody answer. And I'm saying, how did that happen? You know, and, and that process of staying with the bloody answer is extending your mind. So what I want you to do is, because I can talk, in other words, I can describe as I see the difference solving for a flaw and solving for an assumption. And I will do that, again, because Jim and I will describe this in, I would, in distinguishable ways, not different ways necessarily, but the manner in which Jim's going to explain something is distinguishable from the manner in which I'm going to explain something. And, you know, some people are just going to be, oh, yeah, 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 when Jim says it. Maybe one person will say, yeah, 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 when I say it. Many people will have a richer understanding of it after we both have said it. Because it's two different ways of explaining the same phenomenon. Mm -hmm. right? um, but for sure, and this goes for everybody, it would be so much fun if you would come in next week, and I mean as many of you as possible, with a list of questions you've worked on, where you, you got the answer, you read the answer, you're not doing anything under time conditions. Everybody get that, right? Nothing under time conditions. And then you say, you know what, I'm not done, and you're not. I'm not done, I have the answer, and I still don't get this. Bring that in, and it becomes a collaborative effort among all of us, right? You're enriching everybody else's understanding of what's going on. And then for Jim and I, that's just, that's, it's just a ball. Because we may not be able to explain it real well. And then we'll be going back and forth on it. Um, more often than not, I think we will explain it well. But this is a dynamic process. And 
so you, you, you made the first leap, right? But now what I want you to do is take that next step, write down the page number and the question number. And then you say to Jim, or you say to me, or you say to the both of us, help. And we'll try. Yeah. I'm beginning to accrue that a shockingly long list of, of such questions, so I'm excited to share that next week. <laughs> well, you can share it this week. But when you say shockingly long. Not shockingly long. But now you said that. shocking, now you say not shockingly long. Who's going to believe this guy? <laughs> uh, like I've just been doing assumption questions and because I know that, because um, Jim said last week that those are very crush. If, if you crush them, you'll, you should. They're crushable. Like it, it's possible to master the assumption questions. And lo and behold, within a week, I haven't been able to completely crush them all. But I'm working. A week. On it. <laughs> so, so you can be a lawyer in a week. <laughs> and again, this is wonderful thing about this is the beginning of the rest of your life. You know, it's not. In American history class that's going to start in uh, you know in February and end in May and you get an A or something that's the end of it you know no no no, no. This, uh, this ends when you end so I had a sorry that was just a preamble so you, you mentioned ripping apart it, uh, 72 through 77 is that because we're are we saving the other the rest of the book for help or you're just suggesting focus on probing question <laughs> great stuff I just didn't want to go farther well, yeah, and here's three. Now that you probed, <laughs> um, I, I <clears throat> from exams for the rest of the exams here for 78, 79, 80, 81. Um, there'll be separate videos, and the videos um, are on the, for the most part they're on the deck of my house. <clears throat> and what I've done in those videos is again this is a process, right? But every logical reasoning or argument in exam 78 through 81 has been broken down to the point at which I'm actually trying to explain, you know, not only why an answer is right, but why the other four are wrong. So look, it's me. It's not perfect. It's not, you know, it, 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 it's valuable, or I wouldn't have done it. it. Took a lot of time to do it. But that's what I want to do. In other words, I see this is <clears throat> three phases, right? The first phase is where we are now, where we have just, let's just get it right. Let's just get the method down, right? But on, when we go to 78 through 81, and we discuss it in here, anything that's unclear is on video, right? Now you've got to access the videos, which are not, not, those are not active. I will activate them when we get to that, that point in the class. But literally, I'm just taking every question and say, you got to do the Cyrax stuff, right? And, and again, depending on how approachable or not approachable something is, when it's really approachable, you're going to know the answer before you have a look at it. You know, that's what, you know, there was a point to this, right? That, that's the psychometric stuff. You're, I know in logical reasoning, well, I don't know anything. I am comfortable drawing the conclusion that in logical reasoning, in any given section, there are at least, of the 25, there are at least six questions in there that are level one. You know, maybe I expand that. Instead of, instead of saying it that way, maybe I say there are at least nine that are level one or level two. Right, so if I want to wiggle room. But to get to general principle, talk to me. Yeah. That if you can establish that as a fact, which is all new here, right? So that I say it doesn't make it so. And, and that's what I'm saying. You're entitled to say, show me. Not that you have evidence in opposition, but you, before you accept what I'm claiming to be as an established fact, right? You're, and could you do that? I'm not saying be a jerk about it, but, but you get that is what this, this is a business of inquiry. It's not the business of I'm going to I'm going to you know shut you down, or Jim's going to I mean, imagine Jim shutting anybody down. I mean, me, yes, I could shut him down, but Jim he's not capable of it. Um, because he's a wuss. <laughs> so you see, but but if you take that right, and you just get let me get the big picture here, and you say, well, wait a minute, 
If it's accurate that, and I'm to a minimum here, nine of the 25 are level one or level two, right? And then we build on what we've done. If it makes sense to you that a level one or a level two issue involves an issue that's straightforward, an argument, right? That's the rule, is the argument. That's what you don't get to argue with, it's the argument, right? But, but if you say, okay, identify flaw. Okay, it's straightforward. It might be difficult, it might be not, but it's straightforward. Then I read the argument. And I'm saying the argument had four sentences. I understood every word in each of the four sentences. There were no complex theories in there. You know, we weren't talking about altruism in the virtuous society. That was there. So wait a minute. So the issue is to identify flaw. I've read the law and I fully understand the law, which again is the argument. I, I understood the conclusion. I understood the evidence in support of the conclusion. I got it. From there, my mind drew the conclusion. In other words, from that evidence, my mind proactively said, yeah, so the flaw is this. Correlation, causation, necessary, whatever, which requires you now to know that stuff, right? Because that's abstract. Doesn't it make sense that a level one or level two will have that kind of uh, uh, footprint? Issue straightforward argument straightforward, the analysis is straightforward, and your mind, without ever looking at an answer choice, forms the contours of what it's got to look like. Talk to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it a one or a two. Do you get it? But tons of test, I infer, tons of test takers are treating a one or a two as though it's a four or a five. And so they run out of what? Time. And they're resisting the test because it's psychometric. They're resisting something as, as important, right, as you're not running out of time, as important is that you build the psychological profile of a successful turn, right, which is being aggressive but not being irresponsible. You with me? You've got, you know, you've got to say to your client with conviction, I, my belief is you should do this. You know, you're going to do what you do, right, but my belief is you must do this. And you do that on incomplete evidence because all evidence is incomplete. Right. So, you know, if we're doing that, if we're saying, well, wait a minute, I'm not treating every question equally. Right. Uh, then, and, and now I have this plan, I just loaded a video uh, yesterday or something, um, so it should be there. It's uh, how do I get my ass into law school? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Um, I urge you to watch, you know, don't, I, it's me, so I'm saying why would anybody want to watch it, but some of it probably I um, So that's where we're going, right? We're, we're saying, okay, I'll bet you Dallas to Donuts, what's on that list is not what I'm saying is one or two. And, and so you're, 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 you're developing sort of an intellectual approach to the test, saying this is not personal, this is not, I'm not getting 180, I'm not getting 180, maybe you are, but I'm not. All right. I'm going to do well. But, um, but to do well, I have a plan, I need to have a plan, right, that takes into account my strengths and weaknesses, and I need to adjust my personality to the personality they want. Because that's what I want to do for a living. I'm not doing it to be, you know, a weasel. I'm doing it because, well, no, I want those personality traits. I'm going to be a lawyer. Um, so, I'm sorry. So, so that's why. And when we get to that point, I'll be explaining. Okay, now with exam 78, each week a new video is going to open up, and then you can come in and you'll drive Jim crazy which is a great thing to do, because Jim hasn't seen the videos. So you can come in with my reasoning, give it to Jim, and then he'll start saying, ah, yeah, yeah, all right, uh, you can do that if you want. Uh, but the goal, again, to reinforce, you with me? Just to reinforce, do this over and over again. John. Well, going through the test, right, will you teach us how to quickly identify a, one, a level one question as opposed to a level five question? Like if you're going through a test, you're going through the admin role of the, of the LSAT, 
and you come across a, a, a question, how much time should you spend identifying whether you should do that question or skip it, whether that question is a level one or a level five and you should move on to an easier one? But you know I'm, I'll take issue with whatever the word, the word teach means. You said, will I teach? Instruct us, show us. Ooh. Instruct is not going to instruct is what you do with the firearm. You can be instructed how to destroy your firearm. Uh, teach, I don't, I don't have a clue. Uh, but to your question, you show us. Demonstrate. Demonstrate, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, but you know, again, what I'm trying to do is does everybody get, it's just, it's, you can go through college and stuff can be given to you. You can memorize it, you can repeat it, and you can do well. And we're desperately getting at it that this is not the case. This is, I think the best that Jim and I can do is demonstrate how it's done, right? But we don't share brain, and you don't want to share brain. And you have gifts I'm never going to dream of. Each and every person in this room has gifts I'm never, I'm never going to dream of. Um, so yes, that that's. There are, there, we're going to have that discussion on the signposts of a level one as opposed to a level five, but the threshold is this. If you understand the issue, is that preferable to not understand the issue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Nobody needs Aristotle. Now, is it fair to say that when you brief, if you brief, right, which means, again, the clock's off, if you brief, so you can spend 20 minutes on an argument. And I'll tell you, I spent at least that, when I'm trying to explain it to you guys, right, I'm sitting down with a single argument, I'm there to, for the duration. So if that's 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes. If it's 40 minutes for a really complicated one, because, again, it's one thing to get it right. It's a very different thing to be able to explain it to someone who otherwise would not get it right. Um, so, yeah. John, would it be fair to say that when you read an argument, you have a sense for whether or not you've understood it or not? Yes. And is it fair to say there are, there are, there are, there are variations on that theme? Some things you understand and you're absolutely certain of it. Some things you kind of understand. You've got a pretty good feel for it, but you're not dead certain of it. So you get that there's a, there's a scope to this. All right? And what I'm saying is, Level one is objective in how they define it. In other words, they define a level one, the LSAC, by the percent of test takers who got something right. That's, but that's an objective definition. But we're not objective. We're, we're, in other words, could it be the case, John, that you're looking at something that's a level four, but you see it because you understand everything as a level one? Yes. And couldn't it work in reverse? Yes. So does every everybody get that? So there's no one size fits all here. <laughs> this is the prime directive is if I breathe, I have a sense for my fluency in any given issue. So I may say I'm really fluent in flaws, but I'm much less fluent in parallel flaws. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. So rather than think, is this a, has it been assigned a level one or a level five? Well, that's helpful, right? But, but, but if your experience tells you that you're just horrible, because remember, you have 35 minutes, right? So you can't be a dilettante. I got 35 minutes, I got work to do. I need a plan. But would it be fair to say everybody in this room is in the position to empower themselves when they take the test? as to what issues give them more trouble than others. Mm -hmm. Well, the ones that don't give you as much trouble are level ones for you, right? And, you know, so it's not one size fits all. Again, reading an argument, you could miss one word in an argument. You could misread a single word. You could misread the word most or the word some, right? You could read the word some. And if your mind, if the image comes, does an image come to you when you hear the word some, talk to me. Yeah. Well, if I said a percentage, does a percentage come to your mind when I say the word some? Talk to me. Yes. Don't think about it, right? If I say, you, I'll tell you what, when you're out drinking tonight, which Lord knows you should do, spending this time with me. Right? 
just ask people around you. Just say, what well, all I want you to do, I want you to think about it. What I want you to do is I want you to affix a percentage to the word I'm going to give you. Right? And then give them the word sum. What percentage do you think somebody who doesn't think about this, who's not a lawyer, who's not in this business, what percentage, do you think that percentage is likely to be greater than or less than 50%? If you say some. Less than. Less than. Less than. Yeah, think about it. Doesn't, doesn't your knee-jerk reaction, don't you see as a synonym to the word some, the word few? But is it? How high could some be? Well, I don't think it'd be 100, that would be all, right? But it'd be anything less than 100 to some. Talk to me, do you see it? So that's what I'm saying, is that what you see is clear to you. You're thinking it's a one, right? But you've misinterpreted <coughs> the word. You're dead. And so you're looking at this damn thing, you say, I thought it was a one, I got it wrong. I must be stupid. What do you mean? Right, but I wouldn't, gra I wouldn't gravitate that as, as, as the first inference, right? The inference there is, that, that I would draw, is you didn't read with the specificity with which the writer wrote, and chances are it has nothing to do with word epistemological. It has nothing to do with content. It has nothing to do with, say, the difference between Jim and myself intellectually. It's got, I don't think it's got, and, well, academic, to get intellectually, academically. Uh, it, it's got nothing to do with that. It's got to do with increasing your awareness of regular language, right? And reading the way you've not yet been taught to read. How much time have you spent academically examining what the word sum means? Zero. Hmm? Not since you learned the word. Right, because whoever's at the front of the room, that's not their business. So I'm not saying it hasn't happened or it can't happen, but outside of a place like law school, why, why would we be doing that? But in law school, there's every reason to be doing that because ambiguity, again, you, every contract you write will be, any ambiguity in that contract will be read against you. You with me? Mm -hmm. So you go use the word some because you think it means few and I'm on the receiving end of that contract and respectfully, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> just cursing. I mean, you know, it's like, you're just toast. Right, and you say, well, how did that happen? Well, it happened because you really shouldn't be a lawyer. So, so that's a very long, but you got it, John. This is, you brief, you acquire fluency, and you acquire probability for yourself, right? Like, what am I good at? What am I not good at, right? right? Um, you read all these arguments, and when you say, no, no, I get it, I got it. Because that way I understand what the word sum, I understand what it can imply, sure. right? Um, I, I'm practicing this analysis, so I'm practicing now. Before I ever look at an answer choice, right? I'm trying to solve up here. Right? That doesn't mean you are going to solve up there. That's not the point. When you solve up there, that's when you can wipe them all, right? But that's not going to happen a hundred times on this test. But that process, for those occasions, right, where you finished reading. You've applied the issue, you've read the law, you've been analyzed, right? And at the, at the end of that, you're saying, I don't see where they're going. That's fine, that's fine. But you're probably gonna see where they didn't need to go. You're probably now, the filter you've created now is very, very likely gonna help you to look at A and say, I didn't know where they were going, but that makes no sense. You know, I look at, so it's not that the process of elimination doesn't have a role in it, it has a role, but it's not the primary role. And you get, the more you practice this, the greater the number of occasions your mind's going to come up with something reasonably concrete, right? None of that makes any sense if you then say, but my exam plan is to read every answer choice. Because you're going to run out of what? Right. Yeah, and, and again, you're, you're fighting the psychology of being a lawyer. You're just fighting it. You're not gonna, if you wanna be an academic, be an academic. Right? But if you wanna be a lawyer, I, 
I, you know, at some point you got to stand up and say, people are ready, Your Honor. Let's go. Let's rock. Let's fucking rock. Let's go. Let's go. But you get that has to happen. Whether it's my world, that, you know, or, or Vicky's world, where it's getting on the call with general counsel from a major pharmaceutical company, at some point you got to get on the what? The call. You with me? So you can't just be having an one. Um, will we either in this class or out of this class be taking full time exams? You guys are relentless. You're relentless. <laughs> yeah. Three phases. Yeah. First phase is going to be in this mm -hmm. 72 through 77. Uh, slight difference will be when we go from 78 to 81. We'll, it's just more intense. Business. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then you have loose exams from exams 82, 89, I got in the mail this week. Yeah. Okay, so as we approach, and you want to say, I mean, if you're taking the test in April, that's one thing, right? Then you save nothing. But if you're taking the test in uh, June, then you have extra time. So you don't, you don't want to use it, all the exams. But that's where we switch. When we get to 82, mm -hmm. right? Would it be fair to say, okay, this is so exciting. <coughs> I'll know I have to stop doing it when I forget what I have to say. Remind me of that. Okay. Two or three phases. 